we'll start our uh, discuss today on engine management system how the system works or the vehicle control for fuel and emission all this thing so this engine management system uh, gives us a precise control right for the uh, emission <coughs> safety comfort and uh, a dynamic driving enjoyable driving so earlier this uh, was for a mechanical side right so because of wear and tear uh, we could not uh, control emissions or safety or comfort so there is a limitations on these points but with the help of our introduction of electronics these units or these four points are get more comfortable or more ease of operation for all applications of automotive maybe it two wheeler four wheeler everything so this is the team on the left side there is a sensors couple of sensors in the photographs i have attached control unit at a center and on the other side we have actuators like injector motor ignition coil etc so this unit or this components will support us to control over the different systems so we have listed around 10 applications or 10 uh, sensors crankshaft position sensor camshaft position sensor temperature sensor manifold sensor total position mass flow sensor knock sensor coolant sensor lambda sensor and <clears throat> vehicle speed sensor so this parameter will take and convert into electrical signals and based on the electrical signals will control over the fuel ignition timing so that we get the <clears throat> benefit out of that reduced vibration noise and harshness so first kp sensor crankshaft position sensor required to understand the position or reference mark of a cylinder number 1 so we can decide the injection timing ignition timing it can be either hall effect or inductive sensor in figure it is showing this mark so this seven number is for the top dead center of cylinder number 1 in the graph position it comes in this area somewhere so this is the mark of cylinder number 1 based on this signaling will introduce allow fuel to enter into the cylinder or the way it has so sensor is fitted on a crankshaft position somewhere pulley side with the help of uh, fixtures and it it allows <clears throat> say 0.3 to 1.8 mm air gap in between two substances sensing element and rotating element based on this it produces signal and this signals pattern is uh, mentioned in the figure so based on this we able to introduce fuel to the engine ignition or spark to the engine it requires for the operation of this uh, engine so very vital information from ckp piston top position sensor second is camshaft position sensor it is same camshaft uh, hall effect sensor it, it has also got trigger wheel but in a different way we saw Uh, trigger wheel in the ckp but it has got some uh, division 60 minus 2 right one is with a larger gap rest all is a equal gap so here we understand say uh, a moment of flywheel rotation with a respective angle and when it comes to 7 we can understand top dead center for cylinder number 1 here we need to identify only uh, according to uh, number of cylinder so firing of a four cylinder uh, in a designated number 1 3 4 2 firing order any of this so this injection timing is required to synchronize with the crankshaft so oil timing is happened injection timing is done ignition timing is happened so fuel is entered and now with the help of uh, cam c uh, camshaft we introduced a spark a right time right amount of spark right so based on this engine will start operating third one is temperature sensor for air so it it represents the density of air so temperature is on a higher side we have a lean or we have low density if we have a low temperature then we have a high density right so based on the information control unit controls the fuel also or regulate the fuel also right it works on a ntc principle negative temperature coefficient <coughs> it mounted on a air filter So while entering through filter, it is monitored based on a feedback signal. Can be controlled or can be monitored. I mean, actuated, regulated. Uh, next one is manifold pressure sensor. So again, 
in the manifold inlet manifold for gasoline there is a butterfly so after butterfly the pressure continuously keep dropping so pressure we have in a positive in mass in positive in negative it continuously keep changing so this uh, mmp sensor has a special silicon membrane <clears throat> it works or it deforms uh, based on a pressure applied to it and is may change the value of pressure resistive resistors sensitive resistors so based on a piezo resistive element we get the pressure continuously but the result reaches to ecm is mean effective so we get the correct value of changing of uh, continuous pressure and based on this reducing raw emissions indirectly we control fuel on the uh, correction side if the signals not received from msc we cannot control or ecm cannot control fuel a constant rate of fuel is provided which is waste of fuel waste of fuel as well as high in emission fuel is not controlled emission is not controlled so after map total position sensor the driver wish at which level it wants to uh, run the vehicle idle position part load position full load position no change in position right continue position so there is a shaft this shaft fitted here on the sensor element as driver changes the pedal so the position of pedal with the help of this three wiper, two wipers it's a potentiometer so continuously it gives a position where driver wish to drive position identified as a incremental or decremental both the side we can get the fuel the shaft rotation considered as a inflow of oxygen so if oxygen flow is increased fuel is increased oxygen flow is obstructed fuel is so operating this entire range say starting to wot for example uh, 300 rpm to 6000 rpm so entire range can be have a uh, selection and based on this requirement we can uh, provide the mass this uh, sensor is fitted inside the uh, uh, at the uh, filter element so after filtering the air there is a sensing element like this box so air enters into this channel and got measured and it came out with the seven number or air outlet from the flow so here there is a heating element so with the help of this air flow it got reduced in temp temperature and because of the resistance changes it gives us a mass flowing into the cylinder or towards the cylinder so it's a combination of uh, two elements one is sensing element of temperature second sensing element of mass sensor so based on this input we can change the calculations earlier we used to have a lambda sensor at the end of or uh, at a exhaust manifold sensor now we have a after air filter this mass calculation unit so now ecm can calculate say we have around 40 kg of oxygen for example per cylinder we have a 10 kg of oxygen so how much of fuel can be completely burned in by this 10 kg of oxygen so we can immediately correct and corrected quantity of fuel can be entered into the there is no chance that ecm uh, oxygen sensor will tell us tell to ecm that rich mixture is coming now ecm will control over there this is right from the beginning we have a input that we have only 40 kg of oxygen per uh, 10 kg on per cylinder so will allow only that much of fuel to the engine or to the specific cylinder this is fitted on air filter before uh, intake stream knock uh, uh, sensor so this is combustion area combustion chamber so this sensor knock sensor is mounted on a cylinder block so wherever or whenever the combustion happens across the range of cylinder say we have a four cylinder engine so continuously 1342 uh, firing is happening so this combustion produces the noise vibrations so this element is a electric element receives the vibrations from all four cylinders and if it identifies abnormal then it try to reduce the <clears throat> ignition timing so if we correct something based on this we can save something on fuel and something on torque requirement we are getting information via a vibration also so it is fitted on a block it works under minus 40 to 160 degree centigrade temperature one thing 
four number application or four number fastening screw or bolt it is uh, fixed with the uh, torque wrench if we fit without the torque wrench application or torque wrench usage this may get over tightened and it may start producing the signal at a normal combustion rate also so uh, based on this uh, fastening torque it produce it start producing at a normal level also it is very difficult to identify what is the problem where is the problem so uh, a torque wrench is required to fasten this bolt because the element inside one number and two number based on that torque value is get fitted so uh, caution required to uh, fastening the bolt wherever uh, use coolant temperature sensor it is uh, identifying the coolant temperature so it is inside the water contents the coolant contents itself so whatever temperature is there continuously informing to control unit so where temperature is low ecm enriches the fuel where temperature is high ecm <coughs> reduces the fuel for example 30 degree centigrade temperature uh, information is coming to ecm ecm will enrich the fuel to starting once temperature keep increasing say around 95 degree centigrade temperature based on a temperature increase ecm will reduce the fuel it has got second option also to start the radiator fan start the radiator fan so at a specific time say 94 94 degree it switch on the radiator fan and say 84 degree or something it switches off the air. so indirectly we can save on electricity or battery unnecessary use of battery also prevented <coughs> lambda sensor this sensor precisely identifies the residual oxygen in the exhaust to identify this oxygen level we use zirconium membrane inside the sensor element to carry out the electrolytic transfer of oxygen ions at a higher temperature so it start producing signal around 500 uh, 400, 500 degree centigrade of temperature and maximum it can produce one voltage with the help of this uh, graph we can understand this is the standard where minimum applications or uh, right amount of application is there this side we have a rich mixture and this we have a lean mixture so based on this the voltage produces so it comes or signal comes to control unit <coughs> it is fitted or located on the exhaust manifold application exhaust manifold in the latest application it is coming two in numbers one is prior to catcon another after the catcon speed sensor or vehicle speed sensor to understand rotation of the wheels or to support abs tcs and stability program control units so based on this brakings traction control or stability control is taking place <clears throat> it will also support to prevent the wheels blocking or spinning so that vehicle stability and steerability are maintained so all four wheels are having this <coughs> sensor to understand the rotation of the wheels plane road turning position left or right rough road pumps which is on the roads everything is monitored with the help of vss vehicle speed sensor also available for uh, the, at a gearbox level so if you are on a neutral position or at a some gear one to five that all information also sent to control unit. So if you are driving first gear, you will have a more fuel. If you are driving fifth gear, you will have a less fuel. We discussed around seven or eight sensors. Every sensor input, ECM will monitor the position parameters and control the fuel, regulate the fuel. In the conventional applications where carburetors are used, there is no control <coughs> over the fuel once engine started so it has got some fixed controls starting position acceleration position pump units but not every changing of uh, temperature changing of accelerator pedal changing of knocking position not every small information is calculated but here we are uh, with the help of electronic software program receive monitor monitoring inputs regulate or control fuel over the very immediate action next and new in the team turbocharger sensor or turbocharger speed sensor so uh, on the shaft there is a wheel this impeller wheel rotates at a very high speed so we have a sensor to understand the rpm of the wheel impeller wheel without having a and through hole right this is the body area and we have inserted up to this certain level and there is a wall after that wall there is an impeller wheel 
so this impeller will keep rotating and we will not lose any uh, pressure so number is identified this number will support us to calculate to stop wherever we require to hold the application application means over running because idling rpm you have a thousand then it is considered you have one lakh rpm some some somewhere of this uh, impeller in it so you are 2000 so it has around 2000 so we have a control around 2.5 lakhs somewhere near to that we'll try to restrict that by help of a controller so here we'll identify wherever required we'll control a valve regulated valve based on regulated valve we can spare some gas pressure onto directly into exhaust um, pipeline so we can control the number of this is the control unit it's a brain of a uh, system it controls fuel supply it controls air control it controls fuel injection it controls ignition so due to its scalability and enhanced performance the control unit is also able to control the exhaust system also transmission also and other vehicle functions also safety related control related steerability related so it is the mastermind head of the management system controlling actuators with the help of control unit so up, up to this we have received all information with different parameters maybe temperature pressure rpm angle whatever so now we will evaluate all this information and control over with the help of this actuators so we have fuel injectors we have uh, ignition coils <coughs> idle speed actuators force control valve wherever required mostly we will see this unit uh, in the gasoline application itself and lastly uh, electronic throttle this is a fuel injector <coughs> it's a kind of a electromechanical device works on a solenoid principle it is available at the inlet manifold <coughs> so that the fuel can be directly entered into manifold before the valve opening in some application we have throttle body above throttle body but that technology is now there not there in the production after this 21 we will have a gdi gasoline direct injection so as good as diesel direct injection we will have this injector in the piston top so this works on a different applications currently we have this small unit inject before inlet valve second is ignition coils to start the gasoline engine we require spark so this coil support us because we have a 12 volt application here we required high amount of power there is a step up transformer <clears throat> which allows battery power into high voltage say 30000 40000 50000 at a specific timing so each cylinder is having one spark plug ignite the mixture to provide spark we have a one coil each cylinder and earlier we have used to have a single coil and a distributor unit so this coil will produce sparks and distributor coil will or distributor will distribute according to the firing order but here we have a pencil coil or coil on flux cop <clears throat> so this eliminates the cable itself because because of cable there is a lot of problems so now we don't have cables anymore next is idle speed actuator or whenever we change sudden accelerator pedal this motor allows air to bypass if butterfly is closed Butterfly is closed, no enter or air, no air is allowed to enter. So engine will die. So uh, the engine keep running. We required oxygen. So with the help of this motor, oxygen will be bypassed through a circuit or a channel, and engine will get oxygen supply. ECM will allow fuel supply, and engine keeps running. It has got uh, two applications. One is stepper application or stepper type motor. Second is rotary type. A rotary type is a new design and more or less it <coughs> fitted with the maximum numbers the other uh, earlier one stepper type is absolute this is for application uh, gasoline only in the tank fuel gasoline is highly evaporative at a uh, uh, day temperature also so the gas taken to a chamber or charcoal canister the moisture of the gas is absorbed by charcoal and other remaining gas will transfer to Pi number or a purge valve. Whenever we switch on the ignition, this will trigger and this gaseous fuel gas is entered into the manifold or the area where it can take as a fuel after the butterfly valve. 
So in by doing this, we'll save some fuel and we'll avoid the uh, evaporative emissions. If you release it in the environment, this amount, this amount, so it is considered as a uh, pollution. If we use it, it's a kind of a saving. So this uh, canister purge valve is located in between canister and manifold electronic throttle. So if we having the cruise control, adaptive cruise control, safety systems or stability programs, so the accelerator positions uh, feedback taken into uh, consideration so that we can apply uh, cruise control via or acceleration via button itself uh, available on a steerings or steering wheel so it can be linked with the systems itself so that was uh, engine management system the team of sensor is there uh, to support different inputs parameter control unit is there to control or regulate fuel ignition <coughs> based on uh, uh, evaluations we can control output with the help of different actuators that was one for gasoline and uh, diesel application both this is second or this is a new application exhaust gas treatment euro 6 application so based on a, a standard introduced say 99 or 2000 euro 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 the standards set by cpcb board bruh, standards based on a uh, european emission standards bruh, based on a driving cycle so we have bs uh, it is based on an uh, Indian driving cycle. We introduced around 99-2000. Currently, we are at a 2020. So, B, Euro 6. So this was the layout, different applications. Now, we are <coughs> introduced somewhere, this red line. So, earlier, we had different applications. Gradually, we changed to Euro 2 or BS2, then BS3, then BS4. Now, we introduced from 1st of April, Euro 6. What is Euro 6? In also coming time, we have a disruptive technology changes undergoes <coughs> that is RDE, real time driving emission, which can be monitored and controlled to uh, make different or uh, stringent reduction in the emission level. So, this Euro 4, uh, Euro 1 limits, this is Euro 2, this is Euro 3, this is Euro 4, and this is Euro 6. See, there is a big difference between four and six. Five is also, I mean, five is also bypassed. So you can say this red portion is very negligible in compared to other any color. So gradually we came to the area where production of the emissions are reduced. So we have introduced first of April 2020 onwards that more stricter and more restrictive norms models manufactured after first April. <coughs> must comply Euro 6 or BS6 norms. So emission 4 and emission 6, non-methane hydrocarbon, nitrous oxide, carbon monoxide and particular metal. BS4 and BS6 values given. So major changes you can have 3.4, 4 application, 0.4, 6 application. So already couple of manufacturers already implemented this Euro 6, 15 or 16 onwards in a phased manner to achieve this target Euro 6. We require more efficient combustion by means of high pressure. Mostly we have a common rail or CRD applications in diesel vehicles, four wheeler passenger car, four wheeler uh, higher application vehicle or heavy duty applications. Because of the high pressure, <coughs> it improves the fuel atomization and improving the combustion process. So pressure in a common rail application, we have 1600, 1800 bar, 2000 and so on. Currently we are uh, applying on 2400 bar pressure. So as you increase the uh, amount of pressure, it gives better atomization. Better atomization results into improved combustion process by using more refined ultra <coughs> low surface diesel fuel. Low surface. So fuel is also modified. One is pressure side, uh, uh, quality improvement of diesel and is advanced emission control on a emission level. By using sensor actuators in an exhaust system, Precisely control it and coordinate with the <coughs> after treatment. Right? Once uh, exhaust enter into exhaust manifold and then keep on moving to the tail end. There is a couple of sensors and actuators to convert this hazardous gases into non harmful gases. So we discussed fuel quality play a very important role in meeting the stringent emission regulations. So BS6 fuel 
or uh, ultra low sulfur fuel is available in delhi since april 18 to understand the other consequences and uh, instead of 2020 it is uh, made available in during 18 application 18 year from 1st of april nationwide availability of bs6 because vehicles can move around anywhere across the sulfur content is a major change from 350 milligram per kilo we reduced to 10 milligram per euro 3 euro 4 and euro 3 euro 4 and euro 6 so this is the major change we have not changed any uh, cta number or lubricity of the fuel but the uh, sulfur content is a major portion major part of it so what is hazardous or what difference it makes us so first we'll take water vapor it's colorless odorless or harmful or uh, harmless so no problem Carbon dioxide, CO2, colorless, color odorless, and greenhouse effect. Third one is nitrogen dioxide. It is different in color, but it can cause acid rain. I mean, it's acidic in fumes. So definitely it will create respiratory problem, even cancerous. So this is a concern area. Third one, uh, fourth one is hydrocarbon, colorless, greenhouse effect, yes. Fuel smelling, it can choke, can choking and breathing problem. Again, this is a problem, particulate matter. Gray black in color, greenhouse effect gas. <clears throat> it can create pulmonary disease and cancerous. So again, it's a problem area. EM is a carbon dust, flying substance suspended in air. While normal breathing, we can take in. So once it enters into lungs, then nothing can be done. Carbon monoxide, colorless, odorless greenhouse gas can cause suffocation. Yes, headache and heart lead to heart disease. So all these four need to attention or a serious attention. So it will cause hazardous uh, uh, some health issue over human being. Treatment of this <coughs> hydrocarbon or uh, CO, carbon monoxide, we can control with the help of DOC, particulate matter with the help of DPF, and last one is with the help of uh, selective catalyst reduction. Target to reduce around 90% nitrous oxide and 50% particulate matter. EGR we were using, we will take some small amount of uh, exhaust gas from the uh, manifold itself or cylinder head itself. We'll cool it down and send it to the inlet manifold. Right here with the help of uh, fresh uh, entering uh, air or boosting effect, we'll introduce some small amount of exhaust gas into the uh, fresh air. So this will the, reduce the entire uh, concentration percentage level carbon and vapor is there into the EGA exhaust gas so it will reduce the heat amount wherever the high temperature is there so oxygen and nitrogen cannot be react in the that area so the preliminary production of uh, nitrous oxide can be controlled right in initial temperature can be reduced or controlled during the time of combustion so the combustion uh, flame propagation will little bit delayed and the <coughs> Temperature where oxygen and nitrogen can be react chemically combined will not take place. So we are doing this uh, since 1999 in the vehicle applications. <coughs> Second is diesel oxidation catalyst to reduce CO and HC. <coughs> CO and HC can be returned in DOC, which can be burned by uh, raising temperature. So with the help of this uh, filter element, we have a departronic system. Departronic is a system where we can inject a fuel in a little bit quantity say we have a unit here injector unit here not equivalent to cylinder injector it will allow us to reduce the emission contaminated inside the uh, oxidation catalyst so whenever required only this injector will allow the system called departronic system right so small amount of fuel injected and this filter can be cleared uh, D, but with the help of diesel oxidation catalyst, second is particulate matter. For this, we'll use this uh, DPF, diesel particulate filter. It's a filter like fuel filter, air filter, it will trap. Here we have uh, gases or particulates, flying uh, substances, black color dust is there. And here we have some green color, that means the particles, dust particle of carbon are filtered here or trapped here inside. To understand the uh, clogged area, we have a sensor called partial differential. 
with the help of this pressure difference initial and after the filter will come to know what is the clog area like this filter will get stopped with the help of some carbon layer entire box filled with the carbon coating this tensor supports us to understand the area <coughs> with the help of this blockage the pressure drops and this side pressure increases so this sensor will allow us to operate certain things so it has got some connections to to understand a is larger diameter and b is smaller diameter so here you cannot exchange or interchange the pipe connections if we do we will have some error area or a p code signal where we can get the uh, idea where what went wrong so that we can diagnose based on this information <coughs> so in the dpf we have two uh, regeneration strategies one is passive the other is active passive is normal driving cycle at the rate of uh, i mean temperature 400 degrees centigrade it will start it, it will itself by its own ecm will start regenerating its own in active application you required as well as i was mentioning the fuel injector this is this is the fuel injector and very small amount of fuel entered into doc to clear the area congestion area it requires bit high temperature around 600 degrees centigrade it will have with the high speed or a rate of happening is high that is why temperature is also high so with the help of scanning device also you can control this to clear the dpf this is the entire circuit this is the dipartronic circuit this is the fuel injector fitted here right it is connected to a fuel circuit fuel tank so fuel is coming to the circuit this is the control area metering unit area from here it is entering into the direct exhaust manifold so with the help of mixer right mixer will allow <clears throat> fuel into doc in a all area right it's a cylindrical application like a gas burner it gives perfect shape to the flame it will per give perfect uh, area to sp spread across the uh, cylinder cylinder means doc cylinder so majorly we have this application in the uh, trucks and buses for passenger car and light duty vehicles we don't require this <clears throat> so last one uh, selective uh, catalyst reduction so here we have a bunch of gases with the help of catcon or doc we reduced little bit after dpf also we have three major pollutants nitrous oxide carbon monoxide carbon dioxide after the add blue injection or dosing selective work with the nitrogen water vapor or carbon dioxide so this chemical reactions will support us to give clean or very less amount of uh, hazardous gases these two systems in a combined picture first we have the part running where fuel tank connected to this metering unit and via this injector so this injector will allow little amount of fuel nt before to uh, doc for the co and hc then we have a particulate filter dpf lastly we have a dosing module for add blue there is a tank behind this uh, so this is add blue system add blue tank a separate tank required so this add blue entered into this with the help of dosing module it is controlled so this ammonia liquid controls the chemical reaction or rate of faster rate of chemical reaction to reduce nitrous oxide so doc can reduce cohc dpf can reduce pf and uh, scr can reduce nitrous oxide so all three addressed from engine to uh, after treatment we have doc then dpf then endurial injection then scr then after treatment <coughs> configuration these two major unit required in the uh, system one is uh, system control or sensor control module and dosing module this is fitted in the exhaust system this is fitted on a fuel uh, dosing tank or add blue tank this is some child part which required to uh, take uh, maintenance because it is open to uh, environment i mean exhaust temperature high exhaust temperature and uh, vehicles are running in a dusty environment so it dust may get attracted to the unit right so couple of uh, uh, o rings or filter or dust plug can be removed where in case it requires this is some technical data to uh, understand when can or what type of filter is there when can filter need to be replaced this is the main uh, area uh, uh, main component add blue 
you can say aqueous urea solution also it contains 32.5 percent of urea and 67.5 percent of deionized water so uh, from here onwards april onwards uh, whenever we take uh, diesel fuel with the help uh, at a fuel station we require this uh, add blue also checked if we don't have vehicle uh, uh, if we don't have a liquid in the tank uh, there is a system right here mentioned engine will not start i mean you have empty and add blue tank right and uh, system identifies with the help of level sensor that you have empty tank so it happens vehicle will not start because here uh, normally we identify tendency of chalao or jugar mechanism nahi hai to bhi chalega so in this case uh, they to maintain the uh, strict emission norms they allowed uh, some system right so we need to understand uh, the level maintained in the uh, uh, tank so that we can right from the beginning of engine we can uh, enter wherever and what amount of quantity liquid we required and we can control the emission with the help of add blue they are asking about when you are looking at the emission uh, characteristics which is being continuously uh, reduced uh, due i mean uh, from the governing uh, bodies to what extent it will go down and uh, is it really possible to achieve this is the question is asking Uh, yeah we had a couple of uh, trainings for this uh, and we observed that it is meeting the requirement uh, desired uh, decided by cpcb so if we maintain the system we will get the results if we don't maintain the system that is the problem and the system will get disturbed scr system will get the disturb for example this add blue uh, people will enter diesel or water into the tank so as a result uh, yeah. you will not get the emissions controlled uh, at the desired level but we have a vehicle yes. observed that air blue is constantly monitored pure in uh, rich urea and deionized water that vehicle really emits the emission as mentioned in the criteria okay there is another question here on this uh, uh, this question is about hybrid vehicle hybrid electric vehicles uh, just uh, can you just throw light on this they are asking hybrid vehicle there are couple of uh, oems are manufacturing but in case <coughs> this emission control system and hybrid so there is a big cost there cost involved into that so it may come and it is there in the existence say toyota have couple of models but they are high in initial cost so it can be a uh, option also cost will go high there is a question there is a question from prasanjit uh, mukherjee he ask uh, whether v6 engine can be operated with very low fuel quality it can but the emission will not meet if you use bs4 fuel in bs6 application so you will get bs4 emissions i mean higher emissions so naturally that if the fuel quality is not good the emissions will be higher correct yes though, though the engine has a technology to have a better uh, emission yes. control having a low fuel yes. quality in that yes fuel plays a very vital role into uh, this combustion process and uh, abhinav is asking a question why are we not switching to vehicles having hydrogen internal combustion engine vehicles that is having almost zero emission it will take some time immediate shifting is not uh, i think a good idea it will come uh, into maybe uh, after the say couple of years or couple of decades the product production of hydrogen is very expensive basically if you say that hydrogen is uh, produced by electrolysis of water then it is actually completely negative oriented approach basically because you know electricity has is having a higher quality of energy compared to the energy what you get from uh, ic cost is very high cost is very high and second part is actually yeah. the safety concern is also to be taken care of yeah in i think i understand from uh, resources netherland is working with this project and they are coupling yes, i mean having couple of vehicles on road but cost is very high the question is if you try to look at the ecu nowadays coming through now uh, suppose uh, suppose something happens to our car we can't take it to the roadside mechanic we need to actually push it to a high tech garage and uh, from there actually the person uh, the technical person will plug in his uh, laptop and try to find out where something has gone wrong and completely remove so what do you feel about it sir yeah but this uh, kind of a problem will not appear suddenly you know, the okay. malfunction indication lamp will give you as a symptom okay. prior to problem appear in front of you so 
So okay. you will have some indication, say uh, something is wrong with the electronic circuit or some mechanical failure cannot be identified with the system, sensor, CCM and actuator. But if something happening okay. with the help of signaling pattern, this small function mm -hmm. like uh, flickering at your you know, instrumental cluster. So you will have to know, okay. come to know that uh, I am facing some problem. So rather to uh, direct go on a highway, I can just go through my uh, vehicle uh, garage. Uh, he will rectify the problem and then I will go to highway. How can Bosch help uh, students in the institution? In what way you will be helpful to us, they're asking? Uh, we are conducting various courses on a skill uh, base for a diagnosis, as you mentioned, on a scanner. So we have a scanning device and uh, diagnostic software to understand vehicle live data and program pattern. With the help of oscilloscope also, we can diagnose the problem, signaling pattern mal malfunction, and we can understand because nowadays every company, even two-wheeler also is having scanning devices to understand the problem. Earlier we used to uh, trial and error method, but now trial and error method is not uh, allowed or nobody wants their expensive vehicle to get tempered. This kind of uh, and entire system oriented forces also there to uh, upgrade themselves with the align with their uh, studies so they can understand what is the current scenario in the field and they can upgrade themselves, groom themselves.